Scanning and editing your own film can start out as frustrating, confusing, or even overwhelming. But it could also turn into one of the most rewarding and expressive experiences that a photographer can have. Throughout the years, I haven't always had the best practices or habits when it comes to archiving, organizing, and staying on top of scans and edits. So I'm going to share some of the things that I've learned along the way. Once we get into Epson scan, you'll be deciding how much manual control and choice you want in your image post scan. For some scenarios, you'll be able to let your software share some of the workload through features like Unsharp Mask and Auto Exposure. Although if you have any plans to edit, post, print, or archive your negatives, I would leave that work to yourself as the software can sometimes be inconsistent and create blemishes and artifacts in the scan. An Epson scan room is starting off in professional mode. The document type is going to be film. If you're scanning Polaroids, instant film, or photographs themselves, then you'll be going with reflective. Our film type is going to be black and white negative. For image type, we're going to go with 16-bit grayscale. For resolution, we're going to go with 2400 DPI. For some larger film types, you can go over 3200, but anything past that is useless since the software is going to be upsizing it. So these are my settings for a 6x4.5 negative. These settings can be adjusted and turned down to speed up scan times and limit file size while sacrificing quality. So moving down into the adjustments. This is where you're going to be able to change basically how much work you're going to have in your edit versus how much work is done in the scan. I leave everything unchecked. Some people leave unsharp mask on because they don't see a downside to it, or at least not a noticeable one. And it can really, really help with light in your workload, especially if you're scanning a lot of negatives, or maybe you just know with your destination where the image is ending that this is plenty, then that's okay. If not, this is something that can easily be done in post. Some people like to use dust removal, but the same thing as Unsharp Mask. These are things I don't mind doing on my own, making sure I have full control over them in an editing software. Digitalized technology with black and white negatives needs to always be checked off. The digitalized technology can't work with black and white negatives since the sulfur halide in black and white film prevents the Epson scanner's infrared light from detecting dust and scratches on the surface. So now that our adjustments are done, we're gonna go ahead and click preview and see where we start off here. So once the preview is done, we're going to see thumbnails. If these crop to where you like them and you feel that it works for you, then you can move forward with these scans. Myself, I like to have as much of the image as possible. And sometimes, depending on how you compose your images or what the subject is, the cropping can sometimes be inaccurate due to blacks within the frame. I opt for going to the normal tab, which is then going to give us an entire scan of each frame. So by default, the marquee tool is already gonna be selected. I'm gonna go ahead and work on this second frame here. I'm gonna use the marquee tool to select within the frame. Once we click zoom, it's gonna pull up a new preview that's just that frame so we can get a better look at what we're working with. We're gonna go ahead and click on the auto exposure so you can see what that does. It's not bad, right? Like we could take this, take it into Lightroom, take it into Photoshop, clean up the dust and scratches, do some light touching, and this is a postable image. For print, I would say that it definitely needs more work in the scan so that we can do more in the edit or anything like a website, anything archival, anything where you want to be able to make changes or different versions to it. We're going to go ahead and not go with auto exposure. If you do go with auto exposure, you want to make sure that you go into configuration, go into color, and make sure that continuous auto exposure is turned off, which prevents it from re-exposing every time you move the selection. I'm going to delete this. We drag it. So now with auto exposure turned off, right? You see the selection tool doesn't make any changes. We're going to be using the histogram adjustment instead to make changes. So I like to start off by having zero clipping. So you can see this is already flattening our image out a little bit. So if you're going the zero clipping route, you can also bring the output to zero and 255. What this does is it ensures that you're getting everything that the scanner got without the software removing any information or making any adjustments to it. As you can see, if we bring this down, it darkens the image. But these are all things that we're able to do in Lightroom, which I feel like handles it better. And we can make versions of it and continuously see the changes we're making instead of locking these in to the scan. Cool. All right, so we're going to go back to full. I'm going to select another frame. We're going to do the same thing all over again. So this one looks like it'll be a good one to do.
Awesome, we have this selected now. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this. You can see that there's a scratch up here, so I'm actually gonna bring that out of the selection and not include it, same here. Let me make sure that doesn't show up when we do our histogram. This is just as much a part of the photographic process as all the other steps that photographers make. What film you're using, what camera you're using, what lens you're using, what settings you're using. Are you pushing or pulling your film? Are you shooting at stock? How are you having it developed? How are you printing it? How are you editing it? This is just as important as one of those steps. And it also is just as much up to the artist and the image maker. For me, I know where I like to live once I go into the editing software. So the decisions that I make in the scan are made for me to better fit my workflow and where I know that I want the image to end up. So knowing kind of in my head where I want this image to be, I know that I want to make sure I have the information so that they don't get blown out. I know that I want to make sure I have the information so that I can still get those blacks in the shadows. Okay, so now that we're done, we're going to go back to full. So say you're only scanning two of these, right? You're going to select all, select all marquees. Once we have all selected, I double check on chart master to make sure it's off. We're going to double check all our settings. Everything looks right. These are custom exposures. Uh, auto exposures turned off. All of these are turned off. All our settings look good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click scan. So now that the file safe settings are up, we're going to be choosing where these images go to, what their naming conventions are, and what their image format is. We're going to name these test scans starting with number one, and I'm gonna be saving these as TIFFs. One thing to note is that our main goal here is to get a form of a digital negative. We want a version of the image that's unedited, uncompressed, with as much possible information for future changes. Think of this as a way of taking the negative and just digitizing it, one that is now acting as a digital negative for future edits. The same way that a negative works in a dark room, the negative will always be the same. It's the printing process that changes how the image looks. In this case, we're making a digital negative that will always look the same. It's the edits that we make to it in our software that changes the way that it looks for print or for posting. These files will be larger and add up over time. So if you can't justify the storage space, then not for JPEG. When it comes to film photography, there is no truly raw format like the contemporary digital counterparts. Instead, we use the TIFF format since it handles being edited better, especially in the 16-bit version. We get a master image that is uncompressed and lossless, allowing it to be kept in its original form so we can call on it if we ever need it again. If we're going to scan our own negatives and go through all this work for each image, it's worth doing it right the first time, even if it takes a little longer, instead of having to do it all over again. Something that I learned the hard way. All right, now that these negatives are scanned, I'm gonna go ahead and hop over into the Lightroom, bring them up and we can take a look at them. With those settings that we had, this isn't truly flat, right? Like, like I said, I made some decisions that I knew where the photo was gonna be. If you have an idea of where you're going with an image, you can make some of those decisions a little more in the scan. I know that even if I make versions of this, all of those versions will be attainable by the scan that I made. So I'm gonna move into develop. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this frame. So one of the first things that I always do when I get into this point, I check to see where my darkest blacks and my whitest whites are. I'll go ahead and hit J so I can see my clipping. So this is the darkest blacks starting to show up. And these are our highest whites. So I'm going to start off in a place where these are just barely there. And then off that, I'm going to bring the highlights down a little bit, keep those grays in. I'm going to bring my shadows up a little bit to give kind of like that wash to it. So this is still a little hot. So I might bring the whites back down a little bit. And so for what I'm looking for, like this already feels pretty close to where I want it. I'm going to move down into my sharpening. Probably 50 ish feels good. Um, hold down control, drag a selection. I'm going to zoom of that just off and on. Yeah, that feels right. It's a very like realistic grain to it. But I feel like this is good for where it's at right now. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the other image. 
Now remember, when we made the selection in the scan, it wasn't the true aspect ratio of the image. So one thing to remember is that you're gonna resize later and make sure that that stays true to whichever film format you were shooting on. We're gonna look at where our blacks are at. So I'm gonna bring my blacks down until they're present. Just here, this looks pretty accurate. I feel like it could go even darker just because I know that this in the trees should be black. We might make a stylistic decision later, but this is looking pretty accurate for where the black should be. Now for our whites, I kind of want to bring the sky back a little bit. And I know that those are really hot spots. This is summer, so I know that the sun is really hitting those cars. It's already looking a lot better. I think I like this tonality here because I know their faces are in the shade. It can't be too bright. If I wanted to, I could even move into a mask and kind of mask this off. Bring the shadows up a little bit. Without, with, without, with. And you can notice the difference in his hands that they just kind of fall into the image a little bit more, which visually makes sense. So I don't have an issue doing that. So yeah, let's take a look at the before and after both of these images. I'm gonna go ahead and S so we can look at a quick proof of it. Yeah, with the white background, that jacket just really comes to life. Um, go ahead and use Y for before and after. So we can see here similarly on the left is what you may get out of your first print in a dark room, right? With this negative. And once you see that negative, you're gonna to start to make those adjustments to the print itself, which we're seeing on the right without altering the negative itself. Um, say I go now and this image on the right, I print it or I post it to my website and I check what it looks like on different devices. I may notice things that need to be changed about the image, not just dust or scratches or spots, but actual core things about the way that the image has been developed uh, in a software and the way that it looks as a print. Those decisions, I can go back to the original scan and make those choices over again. We're also going to go into the full screen. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of scan through these and see how it looks with different background colors. Um, so see if anything stands out to me about kind of where the image information is living at. It looks really nice on black. It also looks really nice on white. We'll go ahead and do the same to the other one. Bring up Y to see compare before and after. Let's go ahead and look at this in full screen also. Check it on a dark gray and check it on a black. I like where this is at. A lot of cleaning to do on both of these images. Um, but as far as where the edit is at, I think they're living in a good place where I could just make some small adjustments compared to how they've face up against the other images that are going into this collection with it. And then from there, I'll be able to make some decisions.